Okay, it looks like we're live. Yay! <laughs> Are we? Because mine says off air. She did say live in a minute. Mine says live. Okay. Did you say live? Oh, it says live. Awesome, we're live. So yeah. hey guys, welcome to another DIY Courage. Um, we missed you guys on the first Monday of the month, but it was a holiday, so we figured you guys might be having more fun just doing what you're doing on Labor Day. Um, so we moved our DIY Courage this month to Thursday, which was the only day that all three, well, all four of us could talk Sarah, and then we also are going to be joined tonight by Sarah and Nick from the Nesters, and they're also known as um, one of the couples on HGTV's Beach Flip. So I'm super excited to talk to these two. They are um, a phenomenal duo. They do a lot of little, you know, they do a lot of renovations and all kinds of projects, mostly around New York City. So super excited to have them. And as always, I'm joined by Sarah Bendrick from um, DIY Networks. I hate my yard. You may know her from that. <laughs> um, and we are sponsored by Duluth Trading Company who makes really awesome clothing. And you know what, shoot, I was gonna grab my boots. <laughs> I, so see, I, the boots that I love are their Andino, I think it's Andino leather boots. And mm, okay. I love them, they're so comfortable. They're like wearing tennis shoes, but they're really cute boots for fall. So I'm hoping we get some nice fall weather right now. It's really hot, probably just like where you are, Sarah. It's actually really pleasant. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's pleasant for you? Uh, like in the seventies, mid seventies, it's pretty good. I went to the water. I went to Carlos oh, yeah, no, it's today, jumped in the water in between appointments. <laughs> Can't go. Oh, you left me back. It's been up to 90. Here. I mean, it's just been disgusting and humid and I need a break. I really need a break. <laughs> I want the cool weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The weather's been great yeah. out here. That was quite the intro, Brittany. You really got that down. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been working on it for two years, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that was really good. So, Sarah, what have you been working on this week? What have you been doing? So, it's been a busy week. Um, I've been wrapping up stuff for the book. Last night, I was there till like 11 o'clock taking photos. The photos are best at night. Um, it's super interesting how they do it. Um, I have my buddy, Joe, who's a photographer, and he'll go and he'll take photos from... Um, different angles and he'll like light it up like I have landscape lighting but he'll also use an extra flash or something to like huh. right space because it's so dark I don't know it's super interesting I was like oh I don't know well, that's it's yeah that's really interesting the photos so outdoor photos are better at night is that what you're saying well during the day there's a lot of different shadows that can be cast without having like you'd have a bunch of different shadows from the trees and all those different things so at night, um, like there's like this window of about like 40 minutes, I think. I'm, I'm not a photo expert, but based on like our conversations, there's a small window of like when the sun is still up and everything's bright, but the lighting's super even and like the okay. sky is starting to change. So like you get like just the best coloring. Oh, isn't that, that's called the golden hour, isn't it? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe. Like at dawn and dusk or something? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we, we've taken photos in the morning. But yeah, we're just wrapping up some. We're, we're going to do photos again next week. Um, and so that's that, that book. Um, hopefully, I think we'll be ready in the spring. So it's just it's going into design right now. And oh, my God. I can't believe I thought I could write a book. But I did. Almost. That's ever. awesome. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I can't wait to see the book. I bet it's going to be phenomenal. Just like everything you touched. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. I do. <laughs> what, do you, what have you been up to? So, yeah, <laughs> I've been trying to decorate, which you can see a little bit behind me. And if you want, maybe if we have time later, I'll show you the rest of uh, what I decorated. I am, I love fall. Like I just, something about like the colors and just the Christmas in the air. It makes me want to decorate. I, I almost feel like I want to make the house ready for when it gets cold so we can be all cozy and comfy. And I don't know, something about fall. I just love fall decorating. I think it's kind of a combination of the color palette and just, wanting to focus more inside. So mm. I started decorating and I was all ready to photograph. I was like, okay, I'll finish up these things and I'll be able to photograph tomorrow because I'll probably do a um, fall decor post on my blog. I usually do that every year. Oh, cool. Unfortunately, <laughs> our downstairs toilet clogged. No big deal. Like usually you can clear the plunger and it, it, it didn't clear the plunger. <laughs> so I poured this like mm, some chemical in there that someone at the hardware store talked me into buying and he had uh -huh. lived there for 24 hours and 
after 24 hours, it still didn't clear. <laughs> so me being pretty handy girl, I had to decide <laughs> what I would do, <laughs> which involved my whole day yesterday was spent hunting down a new toilet because I hate this toilet anyway and it always clogs and I was like, if I'm gonna pull this toilet up, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it. So um, I found the toilet I wanted, pulled the old one up and um, I found what was clogging the toilet and usually I like to blame it on my husband or my kids, but um, <laughs> this is what fell into the toilet. Oh my, <laughs> it's so little, that's so little. It's, it's a remote for my camera, and it must have been in my pocket and fell down there, and I had no idea. So it was my fault, but hey, at least I got to replace this toilet that I hated with a nice one, and um, I'm kind of loving it because it has a dual flush. It's a Kohler, and it's higher. It's like a taller seat, so, and oh. hopefully it's clog-free. I don't know, but we'll see. You know, I don't know a thing about toilets, but I've always wanted to install an outhouse in somebody's house, and nobody's let me done, do it yet. An outhouse. <laughs> You know, we need, to get, we need to get Anna White on because she just, they just built an outhouse um, really? for her. Yeah, they did. So, yeah, we need to get her on and talk to her about that. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, my God, I would love to do that. I mean, it can't be that complicated. I don't know. I'll have to bring you in to install the toilet, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, believe it or not, I, it's not, it's not a difficult project. Um, in terms of, like, complexity for, as the, you know, for plumbing projects, it's pretty easy. Um, the hard part is lifting the toilet and being able to line it up on the bolts. But uh, I saw someone had a really cool tip that they said, go ahead and um, put two straws on the two bolts that they actually come up from another floor and you have to line up the toilet right on those bolts. So put yeah. two straws on it and then that way it kind of extends the bolts up because at the same time you've got a wax ring on the bottom of the toilet and you don't want to smush it. You got to like bring it straight down. So hey, do you keep carry that toilet yourself? How much does a toilet weigh? Well, you don't, you take off the tank, so that reduces some weight. Okay. I don't know if you weigh it. I mean, it was heavy, but it was more awkward than heavy. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So that reduces some weight. For you. Hi! It was heavy, but it was more awkward here. than heavy. I don't know. I don't. Uh oh, we got some feedback. That reduces some weight. For you. It was heavy. Hey, do you, hopefully your audio will catch up in a second. So. All right, I'm Sarah and Nick. I muted you guys because your audio has been all kind of wonky. So mm -hmm. hopefully they'll catch up in a minute. If not, we might need to like I don't know what we're gonna do with them. We might have to kick oh. you out and bring you back in in a second. So yeah, we'll give we're it. Pretty a good at that. <laughs> but I should probably introduce this handsome couple that you guys see here on the screen. <laughs> this is uh, Nick and Sarah, and they are from the Nesters. They are um, phenomenal. They they really they have a really beautiful design sense, and you know not only design but space planning. It's just which is a, a premium when you're living in New York City. So these guys are really, you know, really talented. So let me see if I can unmute them, see how their audio is doing. Let's see, one sec. I know, I can't wait to meet them. I know, and I, I still have them muted. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> I can't unmute them. <laughs> oh, no. Let's see, one sec. Okay. Hello. Hi. Is it better yet? I, know, I still have them muted. <laughs> it's, okay, so turn your volume yeah. all the way down. Like, turn your computer volume down. Okay. It's, okay, so turn your volume all the way down. Like, turn your computer volume down. Oh, it's getting okay. better. Maybe. Okay, so turn your volume all the way down. Sorry, guys. It's like repeating. <laughs> So weird. You gotta love technology. I know. It's always something with these chats. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's like repeating. So weird. You gotta love technology. I know. It's always something with these chats. Okay. Hey, Sarah and Nick, I'm gonna eject you and bring you guys back in. Okay, and we'll see if it okay. clears up your audio. So <laughs> 
<laughs> it's always something. <laughs> I know. It seems like when they talk, we can hear them fine, but why is it reflecting? I don't know. That's really bizarre. Are. Hmm. So we'll I'm see. in an echoey room, but I don't think that's it. No, I don't think so either. Because when I muted them, it went away. Oh yeah, that's true. That is true. So yeah, that's why I can totally tell. Um, in the meantime, I do want to be able to enable the chat. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing that we always forget, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's see if they'll come back in a second. Yeah. We'll let you go ahead and. So I can't wait to meet them. I want to hear all about their beach house renovation. I went. And yeah. Did, did you watch it? Did you watch it at all? I didn't watch it, but I, I saw all the photos on the HGTV.com. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. That sounds it's, it's, so much better. <laughs> that was like Groundhog's Day or something. <laughs> it was like over and over again. Repeating. That was bizarre. <laughs> it was so weird. <laughs> we had a one time we were doing this, and I sounded like a chipmunk or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we had another time. It was Dar Darth Vader. So one whole one. Uh, yeah, we always have issues. It's just, it's just a given. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh well, so good to meet you guys. I went and stalked your website and saw all your photos on HGTV.com. You guys are certainly talented. So I can't wait to hear your guys' madness and method and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so did I do a good intro? You need to tell me exactly what you guys do, like what your business is. Because I know you do some decorating and you do some design and you do organizing. But am I leaving anything out? So we, we do... Um, we started as a handyman organizing company. Nick did the handyman work, I did the organizing, and then we actually got, no pun intended, a lot of courage after HGTV and decided just <laughs> to go for what we really were trying to do, which was full-on renovations. So we started bidding on projects, and we started getting hired. Yeah, so we're construction. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And you guys are based in New York, so I imagine you need a contractor's license or... Yes. That is correct. All the licenses, all the insurances. All the insurances. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, that was so interesting. We had a guest once who was a contractor, but she's like, all I had to do was like turn in a piece of paper or something. Remember that, Brittany? Oh, I don't. Who was that? <laughs> I don't remember. Because uh, like, that wasn't all I had to do. <laughs> I had to, like, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. I was like, same was with shocked. you. I, was, like, I had to take like an eight hour test. Right. For, like, <laughs> three months. <laughs> There's definitely a couple different tests you can take and licenses that you, they recommend that you get. But the, the easy one is the Department of Consumer Affairs. And that's, for the most part, filling out a lot of paperwork, paying your fees, and getting legit. But there are definitely tests you can take. I'm also led. Uh, lead paint certified. Oh, um, cool. oh, wow. That's an eight-hour class that you got to take as well. Yeah. Wow. Cool. So, uh, do you have like a general, or do you have specialty licenses? Um, yeah, I'm a general contractor, but I have my focuses. Um, I, I, I mean, we do pretty much do everything. So, we try. I try to do as much work as I can possibly because I like doing the work. Um, yeah. we're, start, we're starting to get into some of the subcontracting. Um, areas and it's it's more work believe it or not you think it'd be less work because you're not doing the actual work but it's there's a lot of work involved with that as well so um, sometimes I just like to get dirty and you know put me in a space and leave me alone and <laughs> I'll put it apart and put it back together <laughs> yeah okay, so I want to know what you don't like doing because I know there's there's got to be like one project you know like what do you not like doing we actually just talked about this. Um, we're not real big fans of tiling. I don't know uh, about you. The, I, it, love, I love tiling, but tiling. It's, a, it's a frosting and cake. Uh, I just did a job that had black grout. Have you ever done black grout before? No, I haven't. Thank goodness. <laughs> Terrible. So messy. It just gets oh. everywhere. Um, but I mean, it, it's, it's satisfying when you actually get to finish something. So um, yeah. I love seeing a finished product. That's, that's the most fun of everything. And, yeah. I agree with you. You like doing everything. That's I right. like doing everything, but if I had to pick a least favorite, I think it's just, it's so, I don't know, I'm we're perfectionists, so I think it takes us extra long, and I don't know, it's that, 
So she's she's modest. She'll say, um, uh, and then she'll go and she'll do it and do it and do it until she's mastered it. And then she'll... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will tell you, the one task that I don't like doing is scraping popcorn ceilings. Uh, <laughs> literally a pain in the neck. <laughs> well, isn't there a lot of asbestos? Oh, oh, go ahead. What, Sarah? Isn't there a lot of asbestos in those popcorn ceilings, too? Or? I mean, you do have to have them tested ahead of time. Um, pretty much if you have a house that was built in 19, I say 78 or 79, and newer, you're okay, but um, around that 78, 79, you should still get uh, your ceiling tested just in case there were products still on the shelf. Yeah, they um, it depends on the region that you're in. In the New York area, it's like 1974, so any building that you work in prior to that, they, they require you to be lead paint certified so you know what you're doing before you get into it. Mm, okay. yeah. yeah, absolutely, but still don't like it. <laughs> if it's asbestos, I'm going to call an abatement team. The popcorn ceiling in the can, and you're like, why do they still sell this stuff? Like, get it off the table. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, if you, have, if you have a leak, tough. Just go ahead and scrape your whole ceiling. <laughs> yeah. 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 Seriously. Does, do you have, have you guys ever had a client that's asked for the popcorn ceilings? I mean, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's using this stuff? <laughs> Who, who does that? Who does I don't that? know. Like, please tell me. <laughs> They're stocking these cans of popcorn. Oh, so I can answer that question because we did have a house. Um, well, this house too had popcorn ceilings. And we had to do a very minor repair in a big, big ceiling. And so uh, when we repaired it and it was smooth, you kind of had to spray and feather just unless you want to scrape the whole room. But right. That, okay, that's, that's just why. viable. <laughs> that's just viable, sort of. <laughs> right. You should just get rid of it, though. You know, if it's. If you need to do that, just get rid of it all. <laughs> yeah. I think every room on Beach Flip had popcorn ceiling. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing that. So did you guys, I can't remember, did you guys do that yourself or did you guys subcontract that out? We did it yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Terrible. You guys are the bomb. You all are the bomb. <laughs> yeah, Louis and Daphne were smarter than us. They just clatted their ceilings with uh, wood planks eventually. They're like, screw this. <laughs> right. Wood up on the wall, that's gonna look, or the ceiling, it's going to look great. <laughs> And it did look good. I liked theirs. Well, yeah, yeah, it did really look great. Well, I think the first room that they were doing, they didn't wet the ceiling. And obviously, you want to spray the ceiling before you scrape your popcorn off. And they didn't. So they're just, they're up there just miserable. <laughs> Cut in oh. free. <laughs> <laughs> they like they're like, yeah, ghosts with all their white plaster. They should have they Googled it. They should have Googled my tutorial. Would it come up? <laughs> you didn't have any access or anything. You're completely. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 You had to. Figure wow. everything out on the fly, no research, no nothing. Wait, so wait, so when you went back to the hotel, or no, you guys were sleeping in the in the place, is that correct? No. They had a, um, a beach house that we all stayed at, but they okay. took our phones away, they took our laptops away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. What? There was a hall yeah. monitor to make sure we weren't sneaking out and doing anything. <laughs> Shut up. That's not fair. I'm That's sorry. Fair. It's terrible. <laughs> How was it living with that technology, though? With, yeah, I know. That's the thing. It's like now it's like, I don't know. We've only worked in the era where like if there's something we don't know how to do, you just do a quick Google search and you figure it out. Right. But like there it was trial and error while cameras are on you. And it's like, I don't want to look stupid, but I don't know how to do this. Yeah. It sounds like they wanted the drama. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> Sarah yeah. loved her. Regardless of what she says, she had no, a blast. I had a blast. It was great. <laughs> but, you know, we learned a lot of things the hard way because there was no research allowed. <laughs> yeah, that had to be. So, did you guys at night like? Were you guys competitive with each other, or were you pretty? We were like pretty close friends right off the bat, um, right? I think in the very beginning, everyone was competitive. Really? Yeah. Interesting. In the very beginning, and then as it time went on, we all just kind of like grew closer, and now we're. I mean, we're still. We still talk. We just chatted okay. the other day. So. So I, I need to know the scoop because. You know, they, they really did try to, like, pit you guys against each other, you know, and try to, you know, get some controversy going. So was that all just for TV? Or So what you're saying is you guys really are still friends. We're all definitely still friends. Yeah. There was, there was like, so the one thing was, and I think this was probably both, like, encouraged by... Ah. Yeah. But <laughs> there may have been a little truth to it. Um, the time when they called Nick Nosy Nick because... Oh, yes, Nosy Nick. That's right. <laughs> we didn't have... We didn't have 
a set of, you know, a tool station for every team. There were two t tool stations we had to share. So two two sets of tools and four teams. Right. Eight. Uh, okay. so yeah. anyway, Nick would go over and, like, see who had whatever we needed. And, um... <laughs> Hence, Nosy Nick was born. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what are you gonna do though? I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. And then how? So how many? You had like a carpenter too, but you were sharing a carpenter. Is that correct? Am I remembering this correctly? Every every team had a dedicated carpenter, but they only oh. let us have him for like an hour here and an hour there. And then when he's in the middle of something, they're like, okay, we're pulling the carpenter just to create drama. And they <laughs> pull him, and we're like, okay, we're we're on our own. And <laughs> and then oh. he disappear for like a day sometimes. His name is oh. Maria and he yeah. is a, I, I think I just deemed, like, like deemed him our mentor. And we still has, talk to him every day too. Like, yeah. he's amazing. Well, has awesome. ever seen someone throw up crown molding as fast as this man can? Like, wow. He was yeah. amazing. And he I, actually doesn't even nail it. He just throws it up and it sticks. <laughs> well, yeah, so when, if you put enough construction, he's the, <laughs> what was his name? Uh, Mark Perea. He lives in Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Mark, why don't you live in Raleigh, Mark? <laughs> well, I keep trying to get him to come up to New York. We'd have like the best team ever. Oh yeah. Oh, that'd be that'd be super cool. So that had to be a super fun experience. So how, where was the actual would you guys film in California, I assume? No. Or, we were in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Oh, you were? Oh wow. Yeah. They had they had four um condos and it, I don't know if they were, it was definitely, it was almost like a duplex. There were two, and were the other two right next to yours, or were they like a couple, like a right next row to down, or right next to each other? Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> he's, he's okay. Somebody wants attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Sorry, What's your dog's name? His name's Hero. Hero. Yeah, that's an awesome name. Hero. He's, he's that's cute. cute. Yeah. So what are you guys working on now? Like, what's, what, what projects are you working on tomorrow or this week or whatever? We just signed a contract for a full gut renovation of a one-bedroom apartment in Brooklyn. Wow. Um, we're really excited about. Yeah, and we also are um, doing our first consulting job where they've hired a, a contracting team that has a lot of experience with brownstones because um, we do not yet. But um, And then they, we have our architect, and we're kind of the design team orchestrating yeah, we're this huge renovation. So we're really acting excited. acting as the renovation coaches, um, coordinating the surveyor to come, the asbestos inspector, the architect to get the drawings done, um, so consulting on kitchen design. Yeah, it's, yeah, pretty, it's, it's pretty fun. So much fun. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. That's really fun. So when do you guys start this job? The consulting job we are we're in it to win it right now. So. Um, once we get all the designs done, we've got to submit it to the Department of Buildings. And if your DOB is anything like ours, it takes forever. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're pulling the permits as well, which is great. Um, it's kind of, so I have a master's in architecture, so I have a little bit of experience with that. And I'm glad I can actually apply it because I've just been swinging a hammer the last few years. Um, <laughs> That's a cool background, though, to have that with what you're doing. That's yeah. Super it's easy. very helpful because he can do the, you know, he's got all the... CAD programs and we can do all of our kitchen um, renderings and so it's def definitely helpful because I can see it in my head but I I come from a theater background I went to college for musical and theater sadly, and sadly with her background she's still a better designer than me <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know it's, yeah it's everybody's good at you know different things so yeah. you, I mean are you both designers on the team or you are you like equals in that do you think like design I contributions I might I might take a little bit more of that lead because Nick is often so busy with like making sure my designs actually make sense structurally because I'll like <laughs> make that happen. He's like, you can't. So <laughs> wham, <laughs> too bad. Yeah. Right. Uh, figure it out. Um, we might take a little bit of that lead, but he definitely, you know, got, if she tells me what she wants, I can do a 3d rendering for her. Um, and I kind of bring it to life and then I make it happen in, in real life too. But she's, you're, she's right next to me. Like, yeah. piling, putting on countertops, drywalling, painting, yeah. crown molding, everything. Yeah. You go, girl. You go. That's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's funny because I was having this, like, um, obviously not a midlife crisis, but I was having this career situation, I don't know, five, 
five or six years ago where the theater industry was just not satisfying me creatively anymore. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd always, I, I've always loved homes, and I found the industry of professional organizing to be really cool. So I got into that, and the more I did that, once we organize these people's spaces, they're like, oh, what do you think about pink color? What do you think about I need to build um, an extra closet or whatever? And so it morphed into, like, me getting a little more hands-on, but it's also pretty creative, too. So I feel like it's, that's where I'm getting my, uh, I, they my say, theater replacement. I don't know. They say that it takes three years working at something full-time to become an expert in it. And the thing with Sarah is she works, like, 16-hour days without fail every <laughs> single day. So in, like, a year and a half, she has definitely become an expert in this industry. <laughs> I follow her. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, I think it's, it's pretty cool. You know, um, our last DIY Courage was with um, Jen Woodhouse, and she's a professional singer. So it's really interesting how all these people that we're talking to, a lot of them have backgrounds in the arts, you know, like not just, you know, visual arts, but also, you know, performing arts. Yeah. I don't know if there's a yeah. correlation there. It's pretty. I don't, I don't know. know. I can't sing, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have a background in illustration, but don't ask me to sing. No. <laughs> but, I mean, you're a great speaker, and that takes, I think that takes a certain amount of um, being able to tell a story almost, even if it's a story that's a little more of a tutorial or, or if, even encouraging someone to do something. It takes a certain kind of storyteller to do that. So I don't know. There, there might be something, something. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> maybe, a, maybe a poetry I'll read, it, but not a sing. <laughs> Oh, did we lose Sarah? Uh-oh, Sarah. Hi. I might have lost Sarah. Oh. Sometimes her Wi-Fi gets a little squirrely. <laughs> so she may smile. pop back. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> She's just frozen. <laughs> oh, too funny. Um, so let's see. I have some other questions for you, but <laughs> I didn't write them down. Your home looks beautiful. Okay. Seeing all your... Uh... Thank you. Yeah, I um. Oh, the chair's in the way. Yeah, I'm really, I really had fun decorating. Um, but I don't know about you guys, and it, this is the negative about living where I do. We have a full size walk up attic, so I have too much decor stuff up there. <laughs> and I really need to just, you know, have a yard sale and get rid of it. So I pull all these boxes down and then throw everything out, and then I, you know. Put it back up in the attic. So it's a real good workout yeah. <laughs> on the week that I'm decorating. It's a great workout. Two, you know, two flights of stairs and yeah, up and down and stuff like that. So what's been your most rewarding project to date? Would you say? Hmm. That's good a great question. question. I think I would answer. We renovated our kitchen, um, and the reason it's rewarding is because when we bought our home, we bought it with an FHA loan. Uh -huh. And we were very proud at the time because it's a New York City property, and we were, you know, pretty young for New York City standards when we bought it. Um, but redoing the kitchen, we were able to refinance, and and now I feel like we're we're really ahead of the curve in how much we own of our home and the value that 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 renovation added to it. Um, so that that's pretty cool. You so know. do you think? Did you guys? Did you add more value than you put into it? Then, like you came out on top. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. Oh yeah, we learned a ton. Um, we really had fun with the design of it. We took some risks. I mean, it's 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 a it's a pretty cool space. And what year was your house built? Nineteen forty. Oh wow, how cool! Yeah. You, can you show us a little bit? Like, or can you like? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So we, it starts here. Where, I mean, oh, all right, hold on. So our kitchen <laughs> is downstairs, which is kind of weird for New York. And it's a mess. <laughs> oh, it is a mess. <laughs> We're putting um, baseboards in our little tiny tool room. Um, wow, how cool. So, so it's two stores. How many square feet is it? The whole home is about 1350. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's a nice size. Oh, I love your kitchen. Can I see it? <laughs> I do. I love the red chairs. You said those the... were a, a thrifty find, and then we um, just spray painted them. They were they're pretty terrible. We're New Yorkers, and we have washer and dryer. <laughs> that's a that's a hot commodity here in the city. 
Um, Shut up. So wait, you spray painted your cabinets? No, no, the chairs. Oh, oh the chairs. chairs. They were at a, um, like, a, a salvage yard. It was so cute. All right, and I love your barn door. That's really cool. Did you guys build and put that up yourselves? Totally did. Sarah actually made this herself. Wait, do you want to show them the tool room? Here. So we're a full-on construction company, and this is our tiny tool room. This is our garage. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm never going to complain about my garage again, ever, ever. <laughs> yeah, that's, wow. That's, yeah, and underneath the stairs, we have some space. So we, we literally have to crawl in to oh get like, all of our drywall tools, our electrical tools. It's that that yeah. would not even come close to housing my power tools. Like, where, where's your table saw? Do you have a table saw in there? With a tarp in our back patio. Yep. Uh, oh, sh don't tell anyone. Then someone's going to come steal it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually just got a storage space. So we're really excited about expanding now. So we're, I'm going to buy a new... Um, awesome. Compound miter saw, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, we, <laughs> we have a tiny shed, so we've got some stuff in there. But this is like, hey, there. you know, all of our various guns and hand tools and whatever. This is it. Oh my gosh! Oh, I just we don't have a choice, you know. So yeah, and so like yeah, yeah you don't really have a workshop or anything. No, nope. so I guess so the back patio is yeah weird I, way. <laughs> I think we're gonna be getting a second home and renting this guy out. Cool. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, it's just too hard anymore to yeah. do it from here. So, yeah. That's, that's our awesome. kitchen. I love the kitchen. So when you guys come into your house, is it on the level that you're on now? Is that what, what you're trying to say or no? You come in downstairs? We go up four flights of like stairs to get into our house. Not four flights. Or four, four <laughs> steps. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take an elevator up to our house. No. Um, so the the lower level is like sub floor, like the okay. ground is. If you're standing up, it's probably like at shoulder level, gotcha. and then the main floor is, you know, it's it's a half a flight of stairs up. Yeah. So, it's, so it's a, is it a split then? Is it a split level or or a split foyer or anything? So not in terms of your traditional split level, but maybe for like 1940s New York split level. So <laughs> it has a separate entrance for the bottom area. If you go down. Oh, okay. A bedroom and a full bath is kind of like our grandmother suite. And then the kitchen is behind that. And then upstairs we have two bedrooms and a bath and a living room. Okay, nice. So it's a, it's a single family home, which is like a there's not too rare... many. Yeah, there's not too many single family homes in... In like Astoria, it's mostly duplexes, believe it or not. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I think I saw on your site that it was like a standalone house. I'm like, what? Yeah. We have pictures yeah. in New York City. How is that yeah. possible? And with all the like the new ferry that they're building and the park improvements, now that a lot of developers are doing these mid-rises, so a lot of construction is happening. Oh, interesting. And that's nice because then you've got a little bit more, I would assume, quiet and some yeah. privacy, I guess, You know, because you're not yeah. sharing a wall. It's kind of like... New York City's version of the suburbs, because we're, I don't know, 25 minutes away from a subway ride from uh, Times Square, so okay. for anyone who you know doesn't know New York too well, so we're not far from all the action, but we don't but have... But we have a backyard, yeah. which is crazy. Oh, yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you do or don't have a backyard? You do. Yeah, yeah, it's like 20 feet by 15 feet. Oh, yeah. Sarah? Sarah Bendrick, that's your next project. <laughs> I will pay for your flight and all and like yeah. double time because <laughs> you can stay yeah, downstairs in our Airbnb suite. It'll be <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Sounds pretty easy. You know, I've never been to New York. Really? You've never been to New York? <laughs> I've never been. What? I really want to that is oh. well, I'll make it. <laughs> see what's so cool about it. Yeah, I hear the fall is the best time to go. I think I might have. I might be missing it this year. <laughs> it really is. Um, you should definitely come. You're always welcome to stay with us. Um, but it's tough. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if you guys have this out in California, but um, we had this, like, it's almost like they, there used to be some sort of deck over our backyard, and there's this, like, two-foot concrete border around what patch of grass we have. There was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes people put the concrete border around if they're doing, like, a kind of invasive grass because it will spread everywhere. And so that, that maintains it, but I don't know. Or maybe oh. they're 
it on top of it? I don't know. Mm. They, I, I think it's someone who didn't like to do yard work and they're like, I'm just going to cover it up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, the deck on top of it? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> At least they didn't concrete the whole thing in. Yeah, that would have been terrible. There are some people in Queens who just where there, you could tell there was once grass there and they just concrete over yeah. the whole thing. Oh, why? I mean, oh, it's so hot in the summer. Uh. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it seems no. like such a bad idea. Huh. Yeah. Does, is it easy to like, keep maintain a lawn in New York or? <laughs> the, here's the hard part. <laughs> we have this tiny, I don't even know this, the square footage of our tiny shed. Not much. It's so tiny. Like eight by five. Maybe. So, like, where do you keep your lawnmower? Where do you keep your weed whacker? Where do you keep all these things to make, yeah. you know, even if you hire someone to do it, but everything here is crazy expensive. So I think that's why it's just, you know, you bought this house and the, and the outside needed more work than the inside. I mean, it's terrible. Oh, wow. Yeah. You need one of those little real mowers, the little push ones that go shh, shh, shh. We have one. <laughs> oh, yeah, have those one. things are awesome. If we had a smaller yard, I'd go back to that. They're kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah. I think they're cool, the push mowers. Yeah. yeah. You just I can't use them on the lawn. Because well, the lawnmowers, I, gas lawnmowers, like, I can't remember the quote on or the statistic on it, but like the amount of emissions and like pollution they put out is like pretty significant, like with blowers and mowers. So like electric powered or like hand powered is like really. really <laughs> 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 I have a half an acre and it's like, Grass, You're Sarah, like, we can't do cords. We can't yeah. do a cord. And if I did a battery, the battery charge won't last for the whole yard. No. No, no it takes me like five minutes to cut the lawn. <laughs> no, 45 minutes or more. Yeah. You just have to like start like mowing little checkers out. And <laughs> little time. One, one week I'll mow like this square, and the next week I'll mow this square. Yeah, my neighbors <laughs> will love us. Actually, I don't even. It makes sense for everybody, huh? I don't even, I don't do the lawn. I, I have a lawn boy. He's called my husband. <laughs> ah! Sounds familiar. Wait, yeah, I have got, I've got one too, Brittany, actually. <laughs> and he's he outside work, though. He much prefers being yeah. outside. That's my yeah. meditation time. You know, I don't, there's something, I was the oldest of three girls, and so my father made me the lawn person, and so ever since then, I just absolutely hate mowing lawn. And my dad was so cheap that he wouldn't get a self-propelled mower. So it was just a pain in the butt to mow. Yeah. And so oh. I married sure I married someone who didn't mind mowing lawns. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get someone that likes to vacuum. I hate vacuuming. <laughs> okay, so you, here's the trick with vacuum. You got to have kids, and that becomes one of their chores. So my boys have, they each have half of the downstairs that they have to do once a week. So Well, if you're know. like us and you don't have children yet, you can always buy a Roomba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you need to like hook up a little vacuum kind of machine to your dog, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is like, uh, that should be a new device, like a new invention. <laughs> the dog bar. The dog bar instead of room The bar. dog bar. That's super cute. And the, the dog would probably love it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like tries to attack our Roomba. Yeah, I was gonna ask, says your dog a vacuum attacker? I've had one of those before. <laughs> yeah. He'll attack it and then he'll like go and hide under the bed. It's like so you gave up. <laughs> yes, oh, fresh pastures beware. <laughs> that is funny. Oh my gosh, um, Sarah, do you have any questions? Any more questions for Sarah yeah. and Nick? I, I know, I do. I had. Uh, I did. Oh, back. yeah, you're like me. I was like, oh, I know we've got questions. And I didn't know. I, like, I had a ton of questions. Um, but I actually wanted to know about the um, the wall that you did in the renovation in the kitchen, the stripes. Oh, yeah. So, did you, how did you attack that? How did you get your lines? And what, how did you decide how big they were going to be? And all that fun stuff. That would be Sarah all the way. <laughs> I love doing uh, stripes or any, like, I'm not, I'm not a fine artist at all, right? So anything that has to do with, like, straight lines that I can measure out, I nail it. Whether or not I can, like, you know, have them be on an angle or do something fun. But I actually just had a friend who is turning one of her closets into a, um, a recording studio. Oh, cool. The voiceover artist. But she wanted it to be pretty. So, um, and, you know, she'd have a big budget. So we just decided to, like, um, we build her some shelves and so she can sit down and put her computer there and we're going to soundproof the whole thing. And we, we painted two stripes. And, I mean, this isn't any new knowledge or anything, but um, 
the one thing that you have to remember how to do is, uh, and actually David Bromstad pointed it out, that he, he loved it because the lines are really crisp because if you seal it off with the paint color that's underneath the stripe that you're going to paint, it seals off your tape even more. So when you take it off, it's nice and nice and crisp. So she, yeah, she paints it twice and lets it dry for 20 minutes. And then when she repaints the actual stripe, there's no bleed through. Yeah. Oh, because you seal it before you put. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, and so do you seal it after that or no? What's that? Do you seal the stripe? Do you seal the stripe or no? Yeah. You seal the stripe with the same color that the the wall itself is. So if it's a white wall, you put your your tape, your blue tape up and you seal it with the same color. And then okay. when you paint over it, um it doesn't seep some, under. Yeah, yeah, there's no way for it to bleed through. So when then you pull the tape off, it's a perfect line. Yeah. That's and you know, home, or whenever I'm doing it for a client, I have my little laser so it, I cheat, so then I can <laughs> put my blue tape along my laser line. But on the show, it was straight up just use a tape measure, make a pencil mark, you know, uh, ten inches, pencil mark, ten inches, and then you know, dry. It was terrible. And hope that the hope that the house was built well and square, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I, going, I swear I measured. <laughs> so you answered my question. I was going to ask frog tape or Scotch blue, but you answered my question. You said the blue tape. Yep. <laughs> Frog tape is great. It's actually better, but it's more expensive. So, ah. with blue tape, go with that. Yeah. <laughs> I think 3M sponsored beach flips. So yes. when I did this, oh, the oh, <laughs> truth comes out. <laughs> yeah, we have blue tape. So. Yeah. So, are you guys pursuing any more like on camera stuff, or are you mostly staying like blogging world? You know, in it's your interesting. Pursuits? Interesting. Um, like I said, about four or five years ago, I transitioned into um, starting my own professional organizing business from being an actor, and I very much <laughs> miss engaging with an audience. So at first, yeah. I, thought I wanted to figure out what blogging is, but the blogging world is its own gigantic beast <laughs> that yes. we are trying to just figure out how we can use it to propel our service-based business in our area. To yeah. stay relevant and to make sure um, anyone who's checking us out knows that, like, either we have a quick tip or here we made something for our home, just to kind of show people like behind the scenes. But yeah. uh, I I like doing um, speaking engagements. So we do some educational seminars quarterly. Um, but I think the camera is meant for Sarah and <laughs> not me. Uh, <laughs> oh, but you guys make such a good team. <laughs> He's pretty adorable. I mean, come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, that's really cool. I was just curious. Um, that's smart. So do you find that um, you get your leads for clients based off your media presence or your social media or online presence? I think so far since we are pretty young. I mean, we've only been doing um, this full time, honestly, for six months to a year. Well, um, been a Nick's been doing it longer, but I joined... <laughs> now what it is today for about, you know, six to months to a year. Um, cause prior to that, I was doing my own thing, and he was on his own. But um, we have made it our mission to make everyone we know in our circle that this is what we do, and we're obsessed with it, and we can do it for you. Um, Would you say you're yeah. passionate about it? Yeah. <laughs> now, like, you know, someone's talking about doing renovation or whatever, they think of us first. I think that's our first step. And yeah. then... You know, advertising, and like I said, we do. Uh, we team up with um, uh, design showrooms in the city, and we bring on a, a real estate agent, a mortgage broker, Nick, and myself, and we invite homeowners in the area to come and learn about how much a renovation could make you on your space, or you know, oh. how much before you sell, or when you after you buy. And that's another way we can reach out to our huge community here in NYC. Yeah, about that is, so. You guys put that together. Yeah. Yeah. About two years ago, I got licensed. I got my real estate salesperson license just so I could learn a little bit more about the industry and find out what aspects of a renovation is going to bring the most value to your property for resale or rent. Um, uh -huh. I just I ended up meeting a lot of great people in the field, and I, my business as, as a, in the real estate is more of a referral base now because I've just met so many fantastic professionals who do it much better than myself, and I right. stick to construction. No, no, that makes total sense to me. Um, I think that's genius. I love it. Uh, I was actually doing some research for my book when I was, um, because I was trying to 
figure out like what are the renovations outside that people are willing to pay for and of course with and that will actually add some out value to the home of course it varies so much from region right. to region so like right. talking to a national audience is really hard to be like this is what you yeah do. it's like it's hard to do that but in like knowing your niche in your neighborhoods like that's really cool that you guys can be that resource yeah. Whenever our presentation moves from whether we're in Soho or uh, Midtown or Upper East Side, we then take that that market's temperature so that the people that we invite are very um, specific. And we can say, did you know that like this building, a block down from you, that was in this condition sold for this much, but the one next to it that was renovated sold for this much, and here's how much the renovation cost. So we can get specific, because even in Manhattan, if you live in Tribeca versus Upper West Side, it's a completely different market. There's, a, there's also so many different property types. Like if you're in a condo or a co-op or a townhouse, it all varies on what value you're adding um, and where you're putting your money yeah. and where you can so eat. So how, how do you keep up? Who writes the speeches and keeps up with the information? We all do. We kind of team up. We meet up before the presentation, and um, um, our our real estate agent Laura, she's a badass. Um, she will uh, do some research on uh, something that someone in the Kate Keller Williams uh, office had just listed or whatever. So we try to get something that's, that was recently sold um, and uh, keep that information relevant to to each quarterly presentation. Yeah, no, that's genius. That's so That's cool. awesome. You guys yeah. are kicking it. You guys are seriously, I'm so amazed. So we should really tell people where they can find you guys, especially on social media. And I noticed, like, I think, um, so you guys are Nestor's, N-E-S-T-R-S. -S. So on Instagram, they're at Nestor's.com. Just drop that E in between yeah. the T e and the R. And then on Facebook, it's the Nesters, but same spelling, no E. So yeah, wh why did we drop the E? So you gotta tell me, is there a story behind that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be good. Really exciting one. No, it's not really. Um, <laughs> what was it like? we, we were trying to figure out a name to call ourselves, because before we joined forces, I had a business called We Organize, and Nick had a business called Fix It Astoria. And we're like, we gotta have, we want something new and fresh. We wanna be born again, we're gonna figure this out. I think you're at a, the bar sitting next to this guy who was, he did this for a living. And you know how in like Tumblr or Flickr they drop the E? Oh, right, right. So he's like, you guys should just do Nestor's. And I couldn't even remember this guy's name, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. So he smart. got all the credit. <laughs> but we thought it was yeah. kind of cool. It's exactly what we do, because it's how do you wrap up. I still am obsessed with space saving and space planning and um, so the organizing is very important to me. We also do interior design. We also construct spaces. Um, and so we needed something that was kind of all-encompassing, and nesting just kind of had that that connotation to it. So, That's All awesome. right, well, I have a quick question for you. Oh, my God, my room is so dirty. Um, <laughs> I have too many shoes. <laughs> what, what do I do with them? <laughs> I, like an I have like an altar to my shoes because they don't fit in my closet. Okay, you guys, like the other bunch. Show the whole room so These we can the see room. the options. Yeah, wait. Where are the rest of your shoes at? Oh, that's messy too. Dang it! <laughs> 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 I know you're an organizer. Oh, yeah, I need to know the whole ready. thing. They're in here. <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at all that wasted space. You know, Come on. I have my. Sarah. Oh, these are from uh, Duluth. These are my Keens. I have my. Construction boots, my cats. I got some more heels in here. These are fancy. Whee! Yeah, so Sarah and Nick, have you guys ever bought any Duluth stuff? No, actually, I was, I was uh, thinking of watching one of your guys' other um, hangouts and uh, or your, your Courage chats, and I was like, wait, I got to check this out because I, I feel like all my old show shirts are now like my work shirts, and it's, it's Okay, yeah. So fall, fall's coming up, and you have to buy one of their flannel shirts. You are going to love me forever because right. you're going to feel like you're wearing your pajamas all day long. And they, okay. have, um, they have, like, stretchy gussets in the back. So when you go like this or you're doing anything, it, it doesn't bind. It doesn't pull your shoulders. Just trust me. Buy one of their flannels, and you'll thank me forever. And then the shoes are awesome, too. I love their shoes. And it's headed here. Is that right? What? It's meant for working in. And, yes. Um, or is yeah. it less fashionable? 
No, I, the ones I have are fashion, but I end up kind of <laughs> walking through the mud, but they wipe off pretty easily. They're the Andino leather, I think it is. And oh. I should look this stuff up. I'm not a very good person right now. <laughs> <laughs> you are fine. Um, yeah, no, I, I totally am digging them. I, I mean, I, I just got their teens. I mean, they're not really winter shoes, but I'm using them all the time. They're yeah. like, they're, they're so nice, like those sandals. And they have, I bought for my sister's husband. They have another pair. I, what is it called? They're leather and they're like moccasins almost. They're like kind of dress work shoes. They're uh, so cool because they look nice enough to like wear around, but like they're construction-y. So like they're super durable and like you can totally wear them out like yeah. on the job site or, or not. I feel like our, our line of work gives a whole new meaning of like day to night. You know how they like have like women in their like blazers and you take it off and you can go out to their cocktail and it's like, We've got drywall in our hair and like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. How do we get ours ours from day to night? Roll seamless. Okay, I'm gonna sh I want to show you guys these boots. Okay, uh, I, yeah. this is and this is kind of a plug, but it's because I, I seriously like between the flannel and these boots, I feel like I'm wearing you know nothing. Like there's no pinching, there's no anything. So let me do a screen share. Yeah. And then you guys can see, oops, share. All right, can you see that? I think oh. it's catching up. Okay. Slow. <laughs> oh man, is it really slow? It's like taking a Oh, it's doing it. something weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, is it, no? No. Let, Whoa. let me turn off the screen share for a minute. Whew, try it again. Let's see, we'll just do entire screen. We'll just do that, you'll see everything that's going on. Can you see it now? Oh, yeah. uh -huh. I need those. Okay, oh, and they come in black too, this is what I have. And they're like a really, rub it's a flexible sole. They're flexible sole. They're waterproof, pretty much. Um, and yeah, they got these cute little buttons on the back. Mm -hmm. Totally love these. Yeah. Nick, I'm sorry. I don't know if they have men's. <laughs> That's not a price either. So Sarah, Sarah, this is the flannel shirts. And um, let's see if they can show the gussets in the back. They have some cute color. Oh, come on. Don't load the zoom. They have some cute colors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me show you in the back. Let's see. So yeah, see right here, there's a gusset, and then there's also the, you know, see so there's no pull when you're working. Yeah, super cute. And the price is like. Yeah. They go on sale too yeah. sometimes. Like if you sign up for that yeah, screen shirt. 55 bucks for a nice shirt. That's, that's No, fair. and they're, yeah, they're, and they're really, I mean like I, I wear this all the time for working and I haven't had a single problem with rips or anything like that. They're pretty heavy duty. One of the one of the great phenomena of New York City is anywhere we go, it's totally affordable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. That's yeah. You awesome. um, go to a bar somewhere else, and it's like, you know, I don't know, four dollars for a beer, and we're shocked. <laughs> four dollars for a beer—that's crazy. That's so expensive. Wow. <laughs> Probably oh like two bucks here. I don't know how much a beer is here, but. Yeah, come down here and come visit me. If, if we'll we'll go out to bar. I think a lot of people are moving there real quick. Yeah, I don't think it's too. I don't know. I don't drink beer, so I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, how much is a glass of wine? Mm. Depends on the wine. About six bucks. Oh wow! Yeah, like six twelve here. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the wine. Six to eight, probably. Yeah, I'd say like ten to twelve here. Yeah. Yeah, you live in another expensive area too. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yes. So, totally. hey, we're coming up on an, on an hour, and um, I wanted to kind of just go over something real quick. Um, so I had a reader who asked me. She was uh, looking at a um, screen porch renovation that I just did on my stepmom's screen porch, and um, I hung a mirror on a brick wall, and she asked, like, oh, how did you hang that? I'm not sure how you hang things on brick walls. And so what I wanted to show is what I used. Um, they actually make... Um, anchors for mason masonry and this one you can actually use in several different things but it comes with a masonry bit and then let's see if I can show you 
there's little anchors Nick's like yeah I know all this <laughs> These little anchors go into the wall and then when you screw the screw in I uh, can't do it but anyway these wings will pop out and make it permanent so you can hang anything on masonry and it's a lot easier to drill right into the grout lines yeah um, but the other thing too is I wanted to encourage people if you get anything that comes with these little freebie anchors we just throw them away because they really don't work yep. really crappy yeah <laughs> oh my gosh I just want to throw those suckers away so this is I don't know Nick and Sarah do you guys use these these are the togglers do you yeah. use these kind of I absolutely love these because they screw in you don't have to pre-drill I mean you can mm -hmm. but you don't have to and then they screw out when you're done with them they yeah, work they the same way well, which they're great you, what'd you say, oh, Nick? Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. used that variety, but same idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I love these. And they come in metal as well. They, and so if you if you hit a stud or something, that if you don't have a stud finder, and it oh. can go drywall, wood, I mean, even metal, metal light metal framing. Really? Oh, that's sweet. The other thing I want to show you is two other, um, for like if you're hanging pictures that aren't, well, these go up to 50 pounds, I think. Uh... Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of these. But they're these little, um, sorry, I'll just show you. They're little uh, picture yeah. hangers. And they have ones that have three nails, and they're like the tiniest little, they're like a little pinhole. Yeah. So it doesn't make much of a hole. And if you're living in an apartment or a rental, and when you move out, it's super easy. Like these are hardly even noticeable when you pull them out, but they hold a lot of weight. Here's one that's, it's got three on it, and it's actually rubberized so that it doesn't slide. Oh, this, nice. one's by, this one's by Bulldog. That's super cool. And then finally, if you don't really need to do much, these are like Monkey Hook, I think is the brand, right. but there's a couple different ones. These are kind of nice. They're for drywall. They'll go in, and then if this is, let's see, this is your drywall. This is on the inside. Right. And then it sticks out. They're like so. magic. <laughs> they're what? They're like magic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah, I like those. But yeah. What, uh, how many pounds does that hold? I think it's pretty significant because it's the like, monkey hooks. Yeah, I have to look it up. Okay. Um, I'm I'm gonna guess twenty twenty five. What do you think? I should look it up. Sounds yeah, about that right. sounds about right. But for a, a tiny hook that goes in the wall, that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing something more than more than that weight, then you can go ahead and. Um, put in two and you know have two D rings on your it says up to thirty five pounds. Nice. Yeah. Oh, so pretty good. Anyway, that was um that was a reader question that I had that I thought would be kinda interesting. Yeah. 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 That, um, we, you know, so Nick, we do a lot of handyman work too where New Yorkers either don't have the time or tools to do simple tasks that everyone else in the rest of the world just has in their in their basement. So it's funny because a lot of people who live in cities like ours um, that never do it, they have their maintenance guys do it or whatever, who, how many people we, we show how to hang a picture up and what a, what a toggle bolt is or what an anchor is. And so it's, I don't know, New York City's its own special little <laughs> of the world. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> Some stuff, it's amazing. You think it's just, it's a no-brainer. Like, oh, doesn't everyone know this? But then, you know, you start asking around and it's not always yeah a no-brainer I guess <laughs> it's a fun thing to show people that they can do it you know and uh and it's not that tough yeah yeah no that's super cool that's always so much fun to do that sounds like so cool how you guys have molded your businesses together and found things that you like and it sounds like you're really passionate about what you're doing which uh comes through and I think probably adds a lot of creativity so yeah. it's super cool see some of the stuff you guys are doing you guys are awesome and do you, do you guys work in the new, new jersey area too like what what is your boundaries that you'll cover we just got insured for multiple states we're really excited really? um we we had a client in jersey and there's this beautiful town called montclair if you ever are in the area um check it out it's wonderful and these have been to montclair Koreans, like they're you have I used to live in Philadelphia for 10 years, so. Well, we're obsessed with Montclair. Yeah. Yeah, these beautiful old houses. I mean, New York has a lot of beautiful architecture, but it's in the form of these giant buildings. Whereas right. with Montclair, it's like every single little house looks different, and 
and they're all just beautiful with detail, and so I can't wait to get my hands on more of those guys. And if you're in Upper Montclair, you can see the New York City skyline, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. That sounds like where I would want to live. Yeah. <laughs> We're thinking about it. <laughs> Sounds okay, now what about what about Connecticut? What about Connecticut and Pennsylvania? Do you guys do any uh, work? Love Connecticut. Um, did a little work for some friends in uh, Norwalk. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Love Rowayton. It's a beautiful town. It's like this little. Uh, it's on water, and it's all like you. Th you think you're in like Cape Cod or something. It's the architecture there is also yeah. beautiful. Pennsylvania, we don't we don't have any clients there yet. Oh but. yet, okay. So yeah, you hear this, guys. Anyone who's listening, you guys need to look up nesters, and they they will cover that whole area. They're not just exclusive to North, New York City. So look them up, hire them to do your next project, especially ones you don't want to do. They they seem to love scraping popcorn ceilings. What I heard. <laughs> we are professional popcorn scrapers. <laughs> I love looking for after pictures. You walk in clean, and you walk out a mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, we've really, really enjoyed you guys. Thank you so much for being on our show tonight. Um, definitely can't wait to see what else you guys are up to. And then I'll be up there in October. Sarah, I'll definitely shoot you an email. And hopefully I'll get to see you guys in person again. Um, so for everyone who's watching, normally we do our DIY Courage chats the first Monday of every month at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So join us. Um, we always talk about DIY stuff, and you know, you always get to get a little peek with what's going on with Sarah and I. And hopefully, we'll see you guys next month. Thank you so much, Sarah and Nick, and um, thank you to Duluth Trading for sponsoring our chat. So yeah. have a great thank you guys so much. Yeah, have a great evening, and um, can't wait to see what you guys are up to next. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. you guys are awesome. Right. Bye. Yeah. Bye.